Hello, folks. This Hangout on Air is live. Welcome to this evening examination. I'm going to have to put this shade closed. There's still too much glare. But I'll, it goes, the light goes away quick. All right. Now, nah, we're doing imported Canadian club, small batch blended Canadian whiskey, classic 12 year age, 12 years. And I have John Anile from Georgia, and I am from Louisiana. And John and Nile, John, welcome, John and Nile. Thanks for having me. And John and Nile actually should be hosting this because it was his idea. He said, you want to examine it? And I said, OK. Whiskey Scout couldn't make it, and other people could not make it who had wanted to make it. Now, uh, but anyway, that's OK. You bought me this bottle, and I really appreciate it. And I still have a lot left. Um, I knew, uh, yeah, I, I knew you had uh, quite the back stock, and I really wanted you to try that. So I figured the only way to get you on board was to just go ahead and get you a bottle. You're right, because I have so much back stock, it would have been, I mean, I might have gotten to it, but it had been years, you know, literally years. Um, it sells for about $22 a bottle, right? Yes, I believe uh, between 22 and 25, I believe that bottle uh, was $22.99, somewhere so in there. Right at the same level of uh, the VO Gold, Seagram's VO Gold. Right. Well, in your area might be cheaper, but here at the VO Gold is, that, is in that price range. Yeah, the VO Gold and the Canadian Club 12 are, I think they're the same price here. So. Okay, so it's similar here. All right, uh, I, I always get a kick out of these Canadian whiskeys because they, now this one was introduced in 1984. They've recently updated the label. The Whiskey Scout has an old, older, right. un, unopened bottle, not really that old, but... Uh, it says imported and bottled by Canadian Club Import Company of Deerfield, Illinois. <clears throat> so they bottle it in Illinois. But I like these Canadian whiskeys because they keep emphasizing Canada. <laughs> right. Yeah. Imported, yeah. Imported Canadian Club, small batch blended Canadian whiskey. Hand selected, fully matured Canadian Club whiskey. <laughs> and it says uh, batch. C12-300, is that your batch? Yes, it is. We have the same batch. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. And, a, and uh, I should have asked Michael Jennings. I'm going to invite Michael Jennings, but a lot of this stuff he can't get because he's in Canada, you know. <laughs> Right. It's crazy. Uh, you live in Canada, you can't find these products, but here in the States, they're everywhere. Really weird. It says, okay, the whiskeys are carefully crafted with the same personal touch and attention to detail. We rely on traditional pot stills and our finest quality hand-selected malta grains. We blend spirits from each of our premium grains prior to aging to allow their flavors to marry. And then age the blended spirit for 12 years in seasoned, char-treated oak bourbon barrels, which is probably Jim Beam barrels, you would imagine. Yeah, that's a... You know, I've never even... Uh, I noticed on the bottom, um, this is one of those products I, I picked up butterscotch on it actually says right there on the label that uh it has full aromas of vanilla mellow wood and spice with a soft butterscotch nose hmm. that's interesting i i i don't know why i haven't noticed that before yeah well are you ready to taste it i am absolutely ready i'm not sure if i remember butterscotch but i don't always sit there and just take mental notes of exactly what I'm tasting. Maybe I should, I guess. Um, but it's one of those that I don't think we're going to be picking up on any almond extract, though. That's, that's <laughs> something I think will be um, omitted from this one. 
I so did. a very dark, yeah, very rich color. What would you I, say that is? Amber? Copper? I would say it's somewhere in the amber or copper range. And I did the review haven't posted it yet i don't think i did the review of the can, um another sazerac brand but i didn't get the uh almond extract i got some vanilla which i didn't know where that was coming from um what's the one i did the 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 uh i sent you a review <laughs> mental block oh the rich and rare yeah, yeah rich yeah. and rare i couldn't think of the names like come on come on get it together yeah the rich and rare which was a lot better than I expected it to be. That's got me even more interested in the Rich and Rare Reserve now. That'll be a good one. If we're examining that one down the line, I'm I'm gonna get a bottle, but I'm gonna hold off on trying it until the actual examination. I'm gonna be patient with that one. I'm thinking around November. That and then we've also got you got your bottle of black and uh, or black velvet uh, eight year. So. I wasn't planning to buy that anytime soon. Okay, this is one of those situations where I said I'm not buying this. I mean, at this present time. And then we went to Dorgnax, and I was looking around, and I was telling David Garlapied, I said, "Oh, I'd like to get that one day. I'd like to get that one day." Oh, I got my eye on this. And then I looked at the tag. said 1099 because I thought and then I realized that it had been that price for maybe a month but they had the tags were pushed incorrectly like they had an 1899 tag $18.99 tag from another liquor that had been pushed in front of it but then apparently somebody had corrected it and I said oh oh I see now it's 1099 well let me tell you that's a good six dollars less than other stores so I couldn't resist I mean I don't know what you think about that story but to I me it's a very much a great deal yeah I think it's pretty interesting I was actually at the uh, liquor store in Peachtree City early uh, earlier today and I saw you know I was looking at prices and it was $16.99 in Peachtree City so you saved what seven I mean that's a seven dollar markdown on a an eight year age product, so that's a pretty good deal. I, it, it'd be hard to pass up a deal like that. Yeah, and I felt like anybody. I said to myself, "Now I'll wait, and then the next time when I really get ready to buy it, it'll be sixteen ninety nine." You know, right? So, okay, let's look at some comments, and then we can taste it, smell it, and taste it. Alex, the beer master, say, "What's up, Ron and John?" Oh, we're just examining this whiskey dylan blake says how it tastes well we we're getting there yingling black and tan and molson gold and good okay craig says a friend of mine hardly ever drinks when he does it's only this on the rocks i want to get into whiskey sip but not mixed drinks what is a good entry level sipper huh it's a good question Depends on if you want to go bourbon or canadian or scotch that's, would, a, that's a good question man. Yeah, because that was my approach about two years ago. I said, well, I had done the, the, the Sazerac rye, straight rye, rye whiskey. That was the first whiskey I did, and I thought, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Somebody gave me a bottle, but then I didn't keep doing it. I just did it because somebody gave me the bottle. But then uh, I did kind of like Craig. I said, well, let me try entry-level sippers. And I think a good idea would just take each class and I don't personally, personally, I don't recommend buying the little mini bottles because they're cheap, of, of, of course. But if you get the 750, it gives you a, a lot of time and, and product to sip down over a number of months and yeah. you can get more focus on it. And they're not expensive, really. So, so bourbon, you could get, if you don't want to spend a lot, I'm going to, I'm going to recommend some inexpensive but but credible products let's say for bourbon get ancient age i saw it for 9.99 that's not a lot of money 
Uh, for Canadian whiskey, you could start with, I mean, <laughs> the choices there are endless. You could start, if you want one without the flavoring, you could go with, I guess Canadian mist doesn't have flavoring, but. Ooh, I would, ooh. <laughs> I would say maybe Canadian club, the standard variant, nine ninety nine for a 750 mil bottle. Yeah, um, it does taste like it's flavored a little bit, but that's Canadian whiskey is flavored. You know, I'm saying Canadian mist because it's so. If you like corn, you'll like Canadian mist. Yeah, it's kind of like a good little. It's kind of a good little base to build on. It's not too flavorful, though. However, it's not too flavorful. Or you could do Canadian the Seagram's VO, but then that's sixteen ninety nine or you know fifteen or sixteen bucks. So, uh. and you know, I'm I'm right there with you. I would I would say maybe Canadian Club for the Canadian whiskeys and either the Ancient Age like you said or another good one. Uh, I believe it's also nine ninety nine for a seven fifty mil bottle is the Benchmark Old Number Eight. Oh yeah, that'd be a good a good a good choice. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> You're right. Um, for scotch, oh, well, I mean, if you don't want to spend too much money, you could start with, oh, Clan McGregor. Now, there's a good one. <laughs> Clan McGregor, depending on where you live, uh, like in my area, the Scoresby is at a uh, budget price point but where you live it's more expensive so if yeah. you can get scoresby at a at a you know um a low price point i would say the scoresby would be good too yeah i i prefer the clan mcgregor but you know scoresby's fine it'll give you a little bit of it'll give you a little touch of what you could get in scotch oh right. uh and if you want a non-bourbon bourbon <laughs> You could, get, you could get early times. It tastes just like bourbon because that's what it is, except because of the aging thing, it doesn't technically qualify as bourbon. But you can get that for $7.99 sometimes, and it's a really nice product. Those would be three in Irish whiskey. Well, you could get Jameson, I guess. And uh, early times is the official uh, whiskey of the Kentucky Derby, or it used to be. It used to be. Oh, I didn't know that. Now, Ronnie S. says, hey, Toronto, you're the man. Drink up, boys. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dylan says, cheers. Universal Exports. Greetings from Louisville, Texas. Greetings to you out in Texas. Ronnie S., greetings from Long Island, New York. Greetings to you in Long Island, on Long Island. Dylan Blake, greetings from Maine. Ehi Molari says i lived in canada for five years and everything is produced there is easier to find in the united states in the states i remember paying almost 50 dollars for a 24 pack of mgd i know oh, oh. No, no 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 dylan blake says black velvet whiskey was my teenage years choice in whiskey now that would be another good one to start with i forgot about that one for canadian whiskey black velvet yeah that's a good choice it's always about 9.99 ronnie nice. says my grandma the, Grandmother drinks scotch. Alex says, hey, Ron, I've been wondering, can we do an examination of Coors Extra Gold one day? <laughs> no, because I can't get it. <laughs> I think we would both love that, but neither one of us can get that in our area. It's just not been sold here for 20 years, about 19 years. Dylan says, scotch, yuck. Hey, wait a minute now. <laughs> <laughs> Craig says, thank you so much for taking the time to answer my question. More importantly, thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. All right. John, you can lead off on the aroma. All right. Mm -hmm. So on the aroma, the first thing I pick up is a nice caramel sweetness. Yeah. There's also there's some light vanilla notes on there on the nose as well. Yes. Not like you get with bourbon whiskey. You get a lot more uh, vanilla and toffee notes with bourbon because that the charred oak imparts a lot of those flavors in there. Although, reading the side of the label, it, it is 
aged in bourbon barrels, so you do get a little bit of that. It's yes, just I'm not as pronounced as with a bourbon whiskey. <sighs> um, yeah. I'm not picking up on – I'm really not picking up on any char, though. Uh, I, I do pick up maybe a little, a, a little oak, but it's not a charred oak. It's just um, – it, there's just a wood presence on the aroma, but it's very, it's very mild. I think I am picking up on a little charred wood myself. And maybe because I, I drink a lot of bourbon, maybe I'm expecting it to be, or maybe my idea of oak, I, I just associate with that char, that, that deep char, and that's not there. Um, but, you know, there is, a, there is a wood presence on the aroma. Yeah, it's woody now. It has wood. Don't don't yes. think it does not. It does, people. <laughs> yes, it definitely does have a wood presence. I, the only thing I'm saying is it's just not really a de like a charred, like a bourbon uh, barrel aged product it, for me anyway. Yeah, because I you know I've had a lot of bourbon. So if if you're used to drinking bourbon and you're expecting that super bold, uh, deeply charred oak on the aroma, you're not going to get that with this. This is more mellow. You do get the oak. Uh, you get the caramel, the vanilla. I'm not picking up on any of the butterscotch on the aroma, but I think I will on the on the palate. And that's pretty much it. It's a very it's a very mellow smelling product. Uh, if you're just getting into whiskey and you took a whiff of this, I mean, I think you would think that it was pretty pleasant. Yeah, and I, I'm getting similar. Um, let's see, you're starting to echo a little. I, he has a little problem with echo sometimes. I'm um, getting mild wood, corn, certainly, a lot of corn base, but not bad, but corn. Maybe like popcorn kernels. <laughs> um, but not the oil. <laughs> um, Maybe a little toffee or butterscotch and some alcohol burn in the nose. Now remember the youngest whiskey, the youngest whiskey in this concoction here, <laughs> this blend is 12 years old. That's the rule. They have to give you the age statement of the youngest so they could have whiskeys that are much older than 12 years. People need to keep that in mind. It's not that 12 years is the upper limit. It's the lowest limit. Uh, <clears throat> so you get a lot of pretty intricate complexity. I guess complexity would be intricate. So I borrowed, I borrowed that from the Office of Redundancy Office. But it's kind of amazing that you can get all that for only $24. And it's aged a minimum of 12 years. It's such a big value. Now, um, you can start tasting it. And then we'll look at some more comments, you know. Mm. So this is, man, such a smooth whiskey. That fir first sip just confirms how smooth it is. I mean, and that's why this, you know, Canadian whiskey typically is going to be a little bit more smooth than your bourbon whiskey, your scotch, just because, you know, it doesn't have – um, I don't know, overly bold qualities like you would get with bourbon and a lot of scotch. You know, scotch is probably the hardest whiskey style to get into for most people just because of that that smoky character, that peat. Uh, a lot of people, that, that's not a, a flavor that a lot of people are used to. But with Canadian whiskey, everybody knows what caramel is like, vanilla, toffee. Those are, those are very... Um, pleasurable tasting qualities uh you know a lot of candy has has that flavor a, a lot of a lot of products a lot of things on the market have these flavors so it's going to be familiar to people more familiar than than other products like bourbon with the the char and then of course like i mentioned with the scotch and that peat so i mean yeah very pleasant uh 
I'm getting the caramel. I'm getting the toffee. This is where I start to pick up on that butterscotch note right in the middle of the sip. It's not a it's not a really heavy butterscotch, uh, but it's it's there, and then it drops off. It drops off really nicely on the back end. It's a very um, it's a very inviting whiskey. Um, yeah, I don't understand. To me, I'm saying I don't understand why people don't like the smokiness of scotch because I bet you a lot of those people are saying, oh, I just love smoked oysters and I love to have a Thanksgiving turkey that's been in a smoker for 12 hours and I love smoked sausage. Well, it's the same concept. It is, but with for me, with scotch, I mean, I love scotch, don't get me wrong, but it was the hardest risky style for me to get into. And it's not, you know, I don't think smoked sausage or, or barbecue or anything like that when I drink scotch. I think earthy, minerally. I was about uh, to say that. I think that's what turns people off or scares them off is the peat. Yeah. That's that soil. Com- yeah, that's compost type thing. You see, so they're, they're, they're smoking it with peat fires, not wood fires. So, and what is peat? It's it's an organic soil compound from rotting vegetable material. So uh, that's been aging, aging in the soil of Ireland and Scotland for thousands of years. So yeah, that's probably that's the thing that I found so strange about it when I first tried it. I said, "Whoa!" I told my daughter, "I said your glasses must not be clean, or they got." tainted by the wood cabinets she said what are you talking about what are you talking about but i didn't realize i was smelling the whiskey but then i got used to it and i said oh i get it now i i I was a little um confused oh well i'll give you my tasting notes all right see we we start talking about scotch so we get all sidetracked (laughs) (laughs) and i could mention that we have a plans in the works for many scotch examinations but uh right yeah all exciting stuff mm-hmm. all right there is caramel there is vanilla there is butterscotch for sure now there's a lot of wood. I mean, I don't know how you feel about drinking wood, people, <laughs> but uh, it's there and it is there in droves. And there's corn. I mean, heck, the stuff is mostly corn. The base, the grain spirits is corn. And then all of their copper pots still corn high wine and the rye high wine and the, the barley malt. So you got barley over here, rye over here, and then you got corn over here. But that's just how they make it. That's how they make American blended whiskey, and that's how they make bourbon, and that's how they make corn whiskey, and that's how they make all those things. And the blended scotch and the blended um, Irish whiskey. Now, in Asia, different story because they're using rice as the base. And oh, what a difference that was when we tried those Japanese, especially that Toki, Tokai, Suntory Tokai. I said, oh, we both said it like the same time. Me and David said, this is made with rice. And then somebody said, you know, you're wrong. It's not a blended whiskey. I said, oh, it isn't? I said, well, wait a minute. So I looked up the Suntory website and I gave him the quote. I said, ta-da, from the company. Never heard back. All right. And I wasn't trying to be ugly about it, but I got dressed down. I was dressed down about it and I didn't take offense. I just looked it up and said, here's the evidence that would argue so strongly against what you're saying because I would pretty much be sure that Suntory knows how their own product is made. Mm-hmm. And if they were trying to, if they didn't want to admit 
that it was made with rice, why would they admit that it's made with rice? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, but back to this. Um, it's very smooth and pleasant, and there is a strong wood quality, but it's not offensive. It just might kind of knock you for a loop a little bit. It lingers around a little bit, like you said, and um, it's got a whiskey taste, obviously, alcohol taste, which some people say, I hate that taste of alcohol. You get used to it. Um, I just don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, if you ask me, what's the downside to that stuff? Like, what's the problem with it? I'd say, I don't know. You'd have to tell me because I don't see any. Yeah. Literally. The only problem would be if you're on a, you know, super tight budget and you can't, you know, splurge and spend 20 plus dollars for a bottle of whiskey. But if you're going to spend 22 to 25 dollars on a on a great Canadian whiskey, there's none better, in my opinion, than the Canadian Club small batch. The VO Gold is up there. I mean, it's pretty good, but... I think the Canadian, I think the classic 12 is a little bit richer in flavor. It's definitely a deeper color. I, um, I, and there could be, there could be coloring added, but I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I agree the with Canadian, that. the Canadian whiskeys are different with their, as far as the coloring and the, you know, the blending sherry and all that stuff that they're allowed to add without disclosing it. Um, but it's definitely an excellent product and, um, you know, you mentioned the alcohol earlier. Uh, everything, every spirit, when you first start getting into this type of thing, you're going to taste the alcohol. Yeah. A lot of times, that's all you're going to taste. Uh, and I like to call it, and I've, I've done some research and, and read about whiskey and, and different spirits. And, and a lot of people refer to it as the wall. And you have to break through that wall, the alcohol wall. Because when you first get into this type of stuff, that's all your palate picks up on. But then as you continue to drink and drink and drink, that's why, like you said, pick up a 750 mil bottle or something because it's going to take you a few sessions to really start to get into her and understand, you know, what is past that alcohol um, because it just takes time for the palate um, to develop or to, uh, to, to comprehend those flavors. Um, and, I, I guess the best way to put it is that all products like this are an acquired taste. Just like beer really for most people is an acquired taste. But if you're patient with this type of stuff and you give it time, um, then you're really in for a treat, especially with some of these, you know, these, these high end Canadian whiskeys, uh, these bur you know, bourbon scotch. Um, I'd really like to try some, some single malt Irish whiskey, but I've, I've never gotten into that. And then of course the Japanese whiskey that you and David have been trying lately. I, you know, it all sounds wonderful. But. Yeah. It's really interesting. I'm going to read a few more comments before we get off the air. I can't stay on too late tonight. I mean, I could, but I'm not for various reasons, none of which are bad reasons. Okay. Ronnie says, I'd like to request more history lectures like the one you did on the Holy Roman Empire. Any chance you'll do more? Yes, there is a good chance. I almost did one yesterday, but I got sidetracked with different things. Somebody had written an article in a Catholic newspaper here, and he said, oh, you knew he was talking about the United States tried so hard to stay out of World War II. And I said, I wonder how he got that idea. So um, I thought that would be a good topic of the video trying to stay out of the war question mark and then i would show that that could not and that, that could not be the case but that's another video for another time i think it'd be fascinating though alex said hey ron do you have a total wine store in your area no we do not tyler says i'm going to get this now tyler i think you would love this whiskey bart says hey guys enjoying the chat and i'm sipping on some fine crown royal reserve right now at the moment is a bit pricey but oh so smooth cheers you know crown royal it's a, it's in a way it's pathetic that i've never done crown royal it's kind of sad 
I should have been doing Crown Royal, but then that's a whole different like planet and you get caught up in it. I know people that live in St. James Parish that the only whiskey they drink is Crown Royal. And it is an incredible thing in their house. They show pictures on Facebook. They must have dozens of Crown Royal varieties and they're so proud of it. And you could just get in this whole exploratory thing in that one brand. I said, oh yeah, I was almost like scared to try it because I didn't want to get caught up in it and then never do anything else. So there's the danger there. Not to say that there would be anything bad about it. You know, one of the most popular whiskeys in the world, if you did Crown Royal and only Crown Royal, you would have thousands of viewers and they'd always be talking about it, you know? So it wouldn't be like you'd be lonely out there doing it. Let's see. Uh, let's, let me go on. Ronnie says, smoked sausage, yum. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Flacco said, cheers, everyone. Hey, Flacco. Bart says, hey, Alex, Jake can't get Coors Extra Gold in his area, unfortunately. No, I cannot, which is pitiful. Dylan says, chilling some wine in the freezer, all I got right now. In the freezer? Whoa, I'm... I never heard of putting wine in a freezer. Yeah, if it's room temperature and you want to cool it off or chill it down really quick, I guess. Yeah, I put it in the fridge. I need to get on my whiskey more, says Flacco. Great advice, man. Yeah, Flacco, you could join us for these things if you'd like. Bart says, hey, Flacco, are you going to join you guys one of these days? I hope he does. He says, I have joined, brother. Oh, yeah, he joined Beer Talk, which I try to get John and Neil to join. But, uh, Oh, he said, yes, yeah, sorry, I meant me. Cheers, bro. I will try. Oh, I will try to do more. Cheers. The United States loves getting into war, says Ronnie S. Now, where did you get that idea? Oh, because of all the history. Yeah. Because of all the facts. I'm just kidding. Tyler says, great discussion. Bart says, yes, sir, Flacco. Hey, Tyler, hope you're well, also says Bart. So we don't want to get too much into history stuff because that is a rabbit hole. But I, I, I do want to do some more videos. Maybe tomorrow, if I have a chance. And I think I might. Um, okay. What's a good starter whiskey, says Flacco's? Well, we talked about that earlier. If you want to watch the earlier part of the video, we had a little discussion that went on for a pretty good amount of time about starter whiskeys, and we kind of covered different classes. Scotch, Canadian blended whiskey, American. We didn't talk about American blended whiskey, though, and I think we made a mistake there. And bourbon. So, John and Neely, you want to recommend an American blended whiskey? I know what I'm going to say to Flacco. <laughs> I, yeah, there's two that come to mind. Uh, the Calvert Extra, which we drank here in Noonan when you came to came uh, for the ball game, which I thought was excellent. And then one other one, it's a little bit harder to find, at least in my area, but the Beams 8 Star. And I know you really enjoyed that one. So, I would agree that Beams 8 Star is a good one to start with. Calvert Extra was very nice, but it could be almost impossible for him to find. But you never know. Uh, but I would also say that Flacco might be impressed and pleased with the Seagram 7 crown. That's right. I always forget that's an American blended. I When I think of Seagram's, I, I immediately go to Canadian, think Canadian. But, you're, but, yeah, that would be a good one. And everybody can get that. Yeah, you can get Seagram 7 Crown anywhere, and uh, it wins a lot of awards and everything. So, uh, oh, and talking about rich and rare, I found out that it won that it won a silver medal at the 2018 San Francisco World Spirits Competition, which was held like a week ago, so uh, or something like that. So, rich and rare, silver medal winner at in this very year, 2018. <laughs> Uh, which I thought was interesting. Didn't win gold. Didn't win double gold. Double gold is like the top. Like it's not good. It's super good. But silver means it's hey, it's a it's a you know hey, it's not bad. Ronnie says I look forward to the history lesson. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. I look forward to doing it. Brandon says benchmark is good. Thanks for the advice, brothers. Thank you, Flacco. And if you do try some of those, please give us some feedback. We're curious to see what you think. Okay, the Cubs game's starting. I mean, I have a lot of important stuff to do. Let me get off. Um, 
I don't know where that Cubs thing came from. It's just some kind of faux pas. Uh, well, any final thoughts on this particular whiskey? It's an A product. It's excellent. Uh, I would highly recommend it for beginners and experts alike. I mean, you can't go wrong with this product. I agree. And if you pay 24 bucks, I know you're going to say, well, that's a pretty good amount of money. Yeah, but you can sip on it for months <laughs> or at least at least a month. And uh, it's not a, a party at crazy whiskey. Nobody's going to buy this and make jello shots with it, okay, you know, unless they're really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Do they make cheap whiskeys like that? Oh yeah, you can get them for five dollars and ninety nine ninety six cents. Let me repeat, five dollars and ninety six cents for the same size seven hundred and fifty milliliter bottle. Same proof, eighty proof, not aged twelve years, however. Uh, um, it comes in a beautiful plastic bottle, and it's sold at Walmart, and it's called Caliber. Blended Canadian whiskey. Yeah. Uh huh. I have a bottle. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I did that. So if you want to <laughs> want to play in their playground, you can buy that. But you might get beat up. But that's. But you know what I'm saying. That's what that's designed for, right? New Year's Eve party type situation. Yeah, if if you wanna if you wanna do Jello shots or buy uh, a good mixer or something like that, don't buy the don't buy this because this is it would be a disservice to this product if you're buying it to mix it in a cocktail, um, because you, you'd really be you'd be missing out on all the nice little nuances and com and complexities that this product has to offer. I was in Wal yeah I was in Walmart about two years ago on New Year's Eve, and I said, uh, I saw this guy buying this big bottle of Caliber Vodka. It's like 11 bucks, 12, 11.99, whatever, it's cheap. Might be, it's a 1.75, so it might be, it's incredibly cheap, 11.99. So I said, uh, and like I said, 5.96 for the regular size. I asked this guy in front of me, I said, is that a good product? He said, oh, no, no, it's horrible. But <laughs> he said, I'm buying it for New Year's Eve. We're making jello shots. I said, okay. I'll drop, you know, let it go at that. But I was, I said, wow, it's, you know, there's people buying this stuff like crazy. <laughs> but I am curious to try it. I mean, it's in the cabinet. It ain't going anywhere and it is going to get sampled. So. For, for better or worse, and more than likely worse. But, you know, sometimes you get shocked, right? That is true, yeah. But this uh, is, this, I'm going to, you know, let's talk. this whiskey is made for what we're doing, examining, thinking about it, talking about it, analyzing it, and all of that. But, yes, you can get Canadian whiskeys that are much cheaper that are not made for that. You can still do it. You can still go through the exercise. And it, they may not be terrible, but they're not going to have all the real intricate qualities. You know, they're going to be kind of bland. Like, well, what do you expect? Of course, they're going to be kind of bland. They're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but they may not be terrible. I, I'm really not judging caliber before I drink it. Just expecting certain things with it. And I'll give it a fair review. I'm not, I don't do slam videos, honestly. I like this and I recommend it and I'm glad you bought it for me. That's all I got to say. I mean, that's it. Any last words? <laughs> yeah. Um, covered it. Yeah. Uh, a very enjoyable product and it definitely gets the highest recommendation uh, from me as you know, for Canadian whiskey. Um, if you haven't had it, you're missing out on some, on some great stuff. And it's, you know, even though it's more of a premium product from the Canadian club line, it's still, very affordable, so. And if I do a little rant for a moment, you would you mind? Of course not. I love your rants. Go for it. 
and then I'm going to read comments and then we're closing this out. Somebody, I read some of the comments and they're so funny. Somebody was saying like, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't like have a photographic memory, you know. I remember the general idea of what they were saying. Somebody was like, oh man, Canadian whiskey, that stuff's horrible. Nobody likes Canadian whiskey, it's all trash. And I'm like, nobody likes Canadian whiskey. That's why all the stores have like an entire section of it. Because nobody likes it. That's why they have huge sections of it. And you go to Winn-Dixie, they've got an, almost an entire section of just Seagram's VO. Because everybody hates Seagram's VO, and that's why they stock it in huge amounts, because no one buys it. Now, you see the problem with that? And um, you might want to check your sales figures and your and the gross receipts on Canadian whiskey. Am I a champion of Canadian whiskey? No. Is it my favorite style? No. But to say that nobody likes it and it's trash, that is such a comical statement. And I know a guy at Bingo, Knights of Columbus Bingo named Dave, and I was asking him one night, I said, what do you like to drink? He said, well, I like to drink the Canadian blends. I said, okay. Here's somebody that likes it, but I guess he's a terrible person. You know, he liked it when he didn't realize he wasn't supposed to like it. It's like Corona Extra, right? I've made, I've said that in my videos. I said, I always liked Corona Extra before I realized I wasn't supposed to like it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny how people, you know, I hear, I hear that about Budweiser all the time. Budweiser, nobody wants to drink that horse piss. That's usually exactly almost verbatim what they'll say. And I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, that's that's probably why it's one of the top selling beers, you know, in, in the country and they uh number three in the United States. It was number right. four. Back to number three. It's number three and it's number one in the world. You notice I said number one in the world. Don't right. I know what somebody's gonna say, oh no, it's snow. It's snow, the Chinese beer. Look, you have to understand when that company did that survey and that study and they said snow was number one, they took every variety of snow and counted it as one brand. Right. Okay, well, let's take Bud, Bud Light, Bud Ice, and we'll count that as one brand. So then snow is not number one. So you can't, that doesn't make any sense. And even, Immediately, people started tearing that article apart. They're taking every variety of snow and saying it outsells Budweiser alone, and it was by not that big of a margin. So there was there was that article made no sense. All right. Oh, oh, we got to say Bud Select and Bud Select Fifty Five. You know, it just goes on and on. It's if you're gonna if you're gonna say something, at least make some sense to it. Uh, in, I found out Fireball is the second best-selling whiskey in the United States. Fireball. Yep, because it's a flavored product that people associate with big red chewing gum, and they can shoot it ice cold. Um, yeah, it's definitely not a, a, contem a, a contemplative product. It's just something to, to drink when at a party. And ever since I start, yeah, and ever since I started hearing about Fireball, I look around and I see it everywhere I look. I said, whoa, um, that's something that I would probably ridicule. I wouldn't actually, I mean, I don't review those kind of things. I'm not out here on my high horse to talk bad about Fireball. Look, if you like Fireball, I, I mean, just drink it, enjoy it. Yeah. I, hey, have no, I don't take issue with it, okay? It's, it's an A product for what it is, which is a flavored, a cinnamon flavored whiskey. But but as far as a a deep contemplative you know product like we're drinking tonight, you can forget about it. Right, and I hear people. I, I don't say anything. I just hear them talking. Oh, we're gonna get some fireball, and then then the other girl will say, "Oh, I love it. That stuff's awesome." And I'm thinking, holy smokes! But I don't say anything. If they enjoy it, they're having a good time. I mean, I'm not here to be, you know, I'm not here to. Tell people what they need to drink. That is so stupid. And I've, and you know, they, I, they have enough whiskey snobs and beer snobs in the world that can do that for me. All right. 
they can go and uh, pompously tell everybody how wrong they are. Alex says, hey, John, I hope you have a wonderful night. Oh, thank you, Alex. I appreciate you watching. He's Alex is always uh, a, a big supporter of the beer community and all, all of this stuff that we do. So thank you and cheers to you, Alex. I agree. Dylan Blake says, drinking a bottle of Behringer White Zinfandel. Oh, now I'm really going to start Randy Raven. No, you know what? If you like it, you should drink it. And if I bought a bottle, I'd probably enjoy it. And in fact, I did buy a bottle once and I did like it. Ronnie says, do you prefer liquor or beer? Oh, well, it depends on the situation now, you see. I prefer both. Tyler says, I got it, laugh out loud. Tyler, I would literally let you come on here and do your examination of it if you like. Let me send him an invite because I'm wacky like that. Yeah, Tyler, jump on and give us a quick breakdown. He's never had it, so this would be a good uh, a good little, uh, you know, um, examination from a, a new Canadian club drinker. I'm sorry, I jumped up because I heard that four-wheeler. No, that's okay. Somebody mentioned earlier liquor or beer. I say both, too. I'm kind of – I finished the last little bit. I'm glad we did this examination when we did because I finished off the last little bit of my bottle, and uh, which I've oh. had for almost two months now. So it is a good sipper, and you want to enjoy it. But, yeah, you got to – Got to drink some some beer in between sips. Oh, now he's going to chase it with beer. All right. I'm chasing mine with water now, people. All right. He says beer, but I do like liquor, too. Ronnie, and then we're going to close it up. I really want to close it up. All right. Because uh, I got a Dawn Busters, people. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Let me go back to the. Here we go. All right. All right here we are. Jello shots are for kitties, says Ronnie S. I never had a gel. Oh, I did have a jello shot once. It was all right. I wasn't too impressed. Once was enough. Robert Bart Robinson says, hey, Flacco, give the regular Crown Royal a try if you've never had it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. i got to go along with that. Ronnie said, this is a thinking, man, thinking man's whiskey. That's right. Flacco said, I've had the apple, but not the regular. I'll give it a go. Cheers for the sink. Thanks for the suggestion. I've never had a flavored whiskey in my life except a little tiny sample at Jack Daniels, and I didn't like it. Yeah, I've had that. Their, their version of the Fireball, right? Wasn't it their cinnamon-flavored whiskey that you tried? Yes, that's correct. And I hated it. Bart says, yeah, I've had their apple and the vanilla. Surprisingly, I like them. See, he likes them. Flacco says, cheers with a, with a whiskey glass. I prefer beer, personally, says Ronnie. What is your favorite beer, Flacco? I don't really like Budweiser myself. Who would name a beer snow? Oh, well, people that love mountains and snow and beautiful scenery. Brandon says, not a fan of cinnamon whiskeys. Brandon Burn Burnside says, Pendleton is a nice Canadian whiskey. Their rye is great as well. I've never had Pendleton. I've never heard I, of it. But I'd, but I'd try it. Tyler says, John and Neely's never had it either. Tyler says, my bottle looks like it's been aging more than 12 years because of the dust on the bottles. Oh, man. Would you do wine reviews, says Ronnie? Ronnie, <laughs> I already do wine reviews. <laughs> Tyler says, I am 10 minutes to my home. I'm driving. Oh, he's on the cell phone. Otherwise, I would hop on right now. Well, uh, I don't think I'm going to be on that late. I'm afraid I was about to get off anyway. But, however, John and Nilly is here and he's got a channel and you've got a channel so there ain't nothing stopping you two from doing it <laughs> oh wait but john really can't because he finished his off but he could like uh he just drank and he knows what it tastes like so y'all can if y'all want that would be a good idea huh y'all could do a, a, a little uh examination on his channel or your channel that'd be kind of cool tyler wants to do that when he gets home yeah he's he's got my info he can hit me up i yeah i'm down and I'd watch it. Dylan says, wine's good. I agree. Bottle from 2008. Hmm, that's kind of old for a white Zinfandel, don't you think? It doesn't taste, it doesn't taste turned. Well, anyway, we could go on all night, but honestly, I don't want to. <laughs> so, uh, 
but I do appreciate everybody watching and I appreciate especially John and Neely joining. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this and, uh, and invite me. <laughs> yeah. And people, this was John and Neely's idea. He came up with the idea to examine this, not me. I'm not taking credit because it wasn't my idea. Secondly, October 3rd, we're looking at rich and rare. That's the plan people rich and rare. If you want to join us, let me know. Those bottles are cheap. It's pretty widely available. It's the number 19 selling whiskey in the United States. I repeat, the 19th best selling whiskey in the United States. I didn't say Canadian whiskey overall. All the whiskeys, number and 19. And won a silver medal this year. So Got a silver medal at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. So somebody likes it. You may not. Somebody does. I kind of like it myself. All right. But anyway, murmur, murmur, murmur. I'm going to end this. Thanks for watching, John. Watching. Huh? Thanks for joining, John and Neil A. And, and uh, if you and Tyler do that little exercise there coming up, I will watch it tomorrow sometime. All right. Thanks, folks. Y'all take care now.